Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Investing for the Common Man, the channel that helps you save not just your money, but more importantly, your time with short, concise, instructional videos. Today, I just want to spend a few moments showing you how to add studies to your charts on your Thinkorswim platform. So load up your software and head on over to the Charts tab here at the top. Once you've got a chart up of the stock you want to look at, Head on up to the right hand corner and you're going to find this little flask symbol with studies next to it. Click here and you're, um, you can add a quick study or add study, but I would go to edit studies. This is probably the best way to do this. Open up this window and here you just see a laundry list of possible studies you can put on here. Um, you're not going to use all these. I don't use all these. There's only a few that I find really helpful. Um, you don't need to spend your time researching each and every single one of these studies and what they do. Um, we'll start with the basics here today. So let's pull up a couple of simple moving averages. So just start typing it up here. You'll find it come up simple moving average and you're going to want to add selected. Um, the simple moving average is going to be on the price. Of course, that's the thing we're studying. Um, so you want this to show up on the chart itself and you can also uh, edit what kind of simple moving average. So this is a nine day, simple moving average, but you can hit this gear right here and edit all the properties. So we can make this a uh, 20 day moving average. If we wanted to look at that, click OK. Um, you can also change the color of your study here. If you want it in purple, you can hit OK and then OK. And that shows up right here on our chart. And we can see, you know, as the stock goes up and down, the simple moving average just sort of trails um, the stock a little bit sort of smoothing out that showing you giving you some indicators on possible you know entry and exit points on the stock. Um, so we can add as many of those as we want. So if you go back to edit studies, you can add a couple of more simple moving averages for different date ranges. This is pretty common. Normally people would do like a nine, a 50 and a 200 simple day moving average. So I'll put 50 right here. Um, that one's purple. Our nine day moving average is going to be blue. And then our 200 day moving average is going to be, let's change the color. Uh, let's make that orange, okay? So now we've got three moving averages that are gonna show up on our chart. And here we go. So we can even change the, the time frame. look at a you know, three year window and sort of see a little bit more. And here you can start to look for, you know, where moving averages start to cross each other um, you can look at long term trends with the 200 day moving average and stuff like that. Um, a couple of other studies um, that you can do. I find the RSI a really good one. And so here, this is an indicator that will help you show, you know, help you know when a stock is technically overbought or oversold. So if we hit add selected, that's going to show up in the lower um, area because this isn't going to be on the chart itself where we're charting the price. It's going to show up as an instrument right below. So let's just go ahead and hit OK. And then it comes down here. Um, and so we've got a nice RSI chart. So we can see there's periods when this stock Apple has been you know, technically overbought. Um, and so the RSI needs to drop back down below 70 before it's considered in a normal range. Um, the last one I want to do, I know some of you guys really like MACD. Um, that's a really good one to look at, a little bit more complicated. Um, if you guys want me to make a video more in depth on how to use these to time entries and exits on your trades, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to do that. Um, so we're going to add that, add that MACD. And you can, of course, all of these you can edit, you can change where they're located. If you want the MACD above the RSI, you can hit these little arrows. Um, you can hit the gear and edit some things. I'm not going to do that. Just hit OK. And here we go. We've got, oh, that looks a little crazy. Uh, let me fix that really quick for y'all. I'm just going to delete that and re add it. There we go. Now it's, in, now it's in a separate column. We don't want the MACD on top of the RSI chart. All right, here we go. Um, so now we have our RSI and then our MACD below it um, that you can look at. Now you can always click and drag things around because you don't want things to get so cluttered that you can't see the information. But you can do, you know, you can just always click and drag these things, these windows, if you want to see one or minimize it down to the bottom of the page um, so it's more helpful. Um, you can also get rid of this volume 
uh, metric if you don't want that cluttering up your space. That's one of the defaults. Um, and then if we want to get rid of any of these, we can open this back up, edit studies, and you know, kill each one individually. Or you can go in and just remove all studies. That can be really helpful if you just want to get rid of them all, get a clean slate out so you can start over. It's going to you know, pop up with the dialog box asking if you're sure, hit yes. And now our pristine chart is back to normal. One of the last things I want to cover in this video is how to mark up your charts. You can do drawings, um, drawing tools, and there's just a bunch of different options. I'm going to cover uh, shapes and lines for now. So if you want to do, uh, if you wanted to draw levels of support and resistance, you're going to get your line tool, click once at the beginning of your line. Uh, you can make this a, a trend line, or you can make this a horizontal level support and resistance. Um, you click there, and that will show up. And these are really nice because they are distinct to you, the specific stocks in your watch list. So if you come over here to Amazon, that line doesn't show up. It's only on Apple. And if you zoom in or zoom out, that line will stay in the same place. Um, which is really nice um, for if you're planning trades or you can see back, you know, you can see analysis that you did a couple of days ago. So we're just going to right click to remove that drawing. And the last thing I'm going to do is show you how to do a shape. If you want to do a rectangle, um, these are really good for if you're selling cash secured puts. Um, so you can just click in the upper left corner and then drag to the uh, lower right and then now you have a little rectangle on your chart this could be where you're selling a put spread or something like that um, you can edit all the properties here you know you can change the number the the dollar signs that it's at the dates that it's at you can change the color here if you want it in yellow um, and then to get rid of that of course all you have to do is right click um, and then come on down to remove drawing I hope that was helpful if you have any questions let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you want me to cover uh, on you know things you can do with the Thinkorswim platform. It's really an awesome piece of software. Uh, just let me know and I'd be happy to uh, work on a video for that. Until next time, keep calm, stay healthy, and happy trading. Thank <laughs> you.